Hi, I'm Priya Rao with the First Weekend Club, and we're chatting today with director Richie Mehta, who's a Toronto-based filmmaker, and it's his second time at the Toronto International Film Festival. First time was back in 2005, was it? 2007, with Amal, his uh, feature film directorial debut. This time he's back with Siddharth, which is a fantastic film about India, um, it's a film that made me homesick, a little bit nostalgic. I haven't been back in 15 years. And it's a really clear look at India, no holds barred, the good, the bad, the ugly. Tell us about where this film came from. Uh, the project basically uh, started as a, a conversation I had with a, a rickshawala, uh, like a cab driver, basically, in Delhi, uh, when I was working on another film, uh, which ended up getting cancelled. And we just had a casual conversation, and he... Uh, told me about this story about how he sent his son away to work mm -hmm. and uh, never heard from his, his son again and was searching for him and I, as he kind of described to me what he was doing and how he was doing it he I realized that the impediments in his search didn't apply to people like you and me right. um, he didn't have a photograph of his son he didn't know how to spell his son's name he didn't know what the internet was at all as a concept um, and I realized that if any of us here were standing beside this guy when he found out his son was missing, his chances of finding his son would exponentially increase. Mm -hmm. um, and with that tragedy, though, I also find that what found what was remarkable was that this guy was telling this to me while he was working. Like, he had to go back to work. There was no time for him right. to sit and mourn and sulk um, or, you know, fall into a depression or anything. And I found that pretty remarkable, that, that he... It had been a year, first of all, wow. which is crazy. Um, and... Um, he was, he still had hope. He, he himself had it. And I thought that that's something maybe we can even learn from. Mm -hmm. Did you ever find that rickshawala again? And was there any resolution to his story? Uh, no, he gave me a phone number to follow up with him. And I tried to help, but the phone number was wrong. I mean, again, it's just, you don't even know where to start. It's yeah. exploring a different way of thinking. That's what we wanted to do with this film. And it is a really interesting look at... Um, child trafficking or we don't really know what happened to the child but just the state of what's happening in in lots of uh, parts of the world especially Asia with children disappearing and how hard it is to really get anywhere in a country that has almost a billion people how how did you go about sort of building that storyline of where would this person start and and how would the police even help like did you have to do a lot of research into that mm -hmm. yeah um, I mean the first draft of the outline as I was writing it which again it just it didn't occur to me to write this as a movie until almost a year later where it just wasn't leaving me and I didn't know what to do with it and I felt like well there's a way for me to order order these events and maybe try to make sense of them and um, as I started writing the screenplay it became very uh, logical based. I mean, again, we're exploring a different way of thinking, but throughout the film, he goes from one way to to an awakening of mm -hmm. the way the world works um, through very task-oriented actions. So it just became very much like, okay, well, I need to do this. How Methodical. do I do this? Yeah, I need right. to do this. How do I do this? I need to find out a piece of information. The people in my neighborhood don't know it, so I got to move my street job to a place where foreign, like travelers right. are coming. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Um, so that's, that kind of governed the screenplay until he starts to reach the end of his rope where it's, it, there's nothing left to do. Mm -hmm. And then it became a very emotional journey and, and, I very, and that was very much a lot of research of where he would go to, to the end of his line mm -hmm. and then what would happen. What I found interesting too is that although it's set in India and many people might have glamorized that aspect of it, that this is an Indian story and that this is a, a fallible Indian man. It's really quite a universal story. I mean, we see we see people who do extreme kindness to, to our lead character and we see people who couldn't care less. And that really is not specific to India. It's a universal story. So I really appreciated as somebody of Indian origin that this was a story that, although set in India, was not trying to um, glamorize either the goodness or badness of the Indian people, but it was just telling a story that happened to take place in India. And that must be important to you. So I just want to know, how do you get to the, the genuineness of, of something like that when you're, you're an Indian storyteller, but you're a Canadian storyteller at the same time? I think maybe that, that just has to do with my outlook on things. Um, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't appreciate when people do films um, or tell stories that are really tragic from the beginning and get even worse. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I think it's very easy to find those in the world. Uh, there's enough tragedy going around. Uh, what I do think is worth exploring is the most tragic situations and how we come out of that, mm -hmm. um, just as, as coping. 
And in this situation, I'm also not out to exploit you know, right. our motherland. Um, I think for me, it was very important to show for most of the film that most of the people he encounters are trying to help him, mm -hmm. that, that we're surrounded by goodness in this film, despite underneath the tragedy right. that's happening, which to me blossoms only in the imagination of the viewer because we're not showing it. Uh, so it's a, that's as dark as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really, really important to me because I think it's very easy for us to go to a place like that and say, oh my God, look at this. But what's difficult is to say, oh my God, look at how terrible this is and look at how these people conduct themselves in a way which I'm not sure we would even have the strength to do. Absolutely. And even though it's a very intense topic and a very sad story, there's so many moments of lightness and of humor and of just the human spirit. And one of my favorite scenes was all the men uh, who are preparing for one of the supporting characters' uh, w upcoming wedding, just sitting around and honoring our main character and and starting to sort of sing a song all together, which is something so universal. Again, like that could happen in a bar on Queen Street. Mm -hmm. You get too many men together. And it was just a beautiful moment of lightness, which which helped this film to be so so touching but not depressing. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, and that was so, so much uh, more, uh, part of our intent mm -hmm. because it's so easy to, again, and we've seen so many movies about things like child trafficking. We've seen so many things. We know what that world we is. Um, so, it, yeah, it was, that was really, um, really part of it. Plus, also, this is such a prolonged journey for him. You know, it's not like an action film where he's got two days to get right. the person back and or 48 hours and you got to do this and this and this and beat up and kick ass and all that stuff. No, it's prolonged. Mm -hmm. And in, to me, in any prolonged situation, you're going to have moments of levity. You're going to have moments of lightness, right. um, contrasting you know, that, that sinking feeling that you have. Mm -hmm. Your actors, your cast is just fantastic. From the child actors right, right to uh, the, the lead actors, it, it's really incredible how natural a lot of these actors were, which is something you don't often think of when you think of Bollywood films. So congratulations on that and having such a fantastic cast. And what's it like for you to have your second film debuting at TIFF? Uh, it's amazing. Um, I, you know, we had a we had a wonderful premiere our first time around with my mm -hmm. first film, Amal. Um, and this time around, uh, you know, we've learned a lot in in since then in terms of uh, production approach, but also in terms of getting the film out there. Um, I think you know we're a little bit wiser right. in terms of capitalizing on. Uh, what this actually means to be in this festival. There is the public aspect, the public component, and presenting the film, especially in a hometown environment. And there's also the, the industry side, the sales side, the business side, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, with our experience, we're, we're, we're pushing forward as well. So there's a lot going on here. Um, my, my tension's definitely shifted, also because the first time we finished Amal, you know, a few days before our premiere, Right. This was finished a little bit earlier, and so we had time to plan breathe this. Yeah, mm -hmm. breathe and plan it a bit better. And you know, we just came back from Venice, which was a whole other type of uh, European showcase. Um, and so, in conjunction with th both of those festivals, I think, um, you know, I, I, I hope there's going to be a real life to this film, a long life. I well, there's been a lot of buzz. I'm sure you've heard some of the buzz around. This could be Canada's bid for the Oscar. Uh, that must be intimidating, exciting. Um, it's you know it's it's interesting because um, it doesn't it's it's cool it's cool to hear it but at the same time it doesn't change what the film is it doesn't change the reasons we did it um, and I have to uh, remember that I can't hang my hat on th yeah. those types of things um, you know it's, it's 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 nice that people are looking at the film in that light. Um, but my overall goal, which I always think about, is I just I just want to make sure this film's available for people to find. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, we know it's it doesn't have big, you know, marquee name cast and things like that. So people, the only way it's gonna it's gonna be found is if people talk about it, and if you know certain types of critics come to it. Um, so if anything that helps that happen, to me is is amazing. Whether it's you know that kind of discussion or just good reviews. Mm -hmm. Now, First Weekend Club was there with the premiere of Amal, and we'll, we'll definitely be back uh, to help support this film. What's your experience been with First Weekend Club and just being a Canadian filmmaker and the state of the industry? Um, you know it's our 10th year anniversary. Yes, I do. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. And happy birthday. Thank you. Um, I, to me, it's, it's really important because um, when I came, came out of film school, I guess that was 2001, um, it was difficult to come to the realization that you go from maybe the top of your class to the bottom of everything <laughs> right. the next day. 
right? right. You're a film Graduation. student. You're a film Yay. student. Now what? Yeah, now what? <laughs> yeah. And so you need a community to latch on to, I think, um, to support um, you and support the work and, and have that based somewhat on the merit of the work. I think it's important. Not just blindly saying right. whatever's out there. And that's what, this was pretty much the first organization that did that. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a community that did it. I mean, mm -hmm. the South Asian community totally mm -hmm. embraced me and vice versa. And, you know, you were there. We, right. we kind of yep. saw that. Um, but then that, that's, not, um, that's not codified. Mm -hmm. In this case, this is. The mandate is so strong uh, as, a, as an organization. And so to me, knowing that we're going into the marketplace, we're competing with the U.S. domestic market on these films, um, we're com com competing with hundreds of other Canadian films, you know, French Canadian films, which have a huge market. And so we need um, uh, we need somebody just to know that just to know that first weekend first weekend club is there um, is really kind of comforting that we're not alone we're not going out into the marketplace solo um, and that there's an infrastructure behind mm -hmm. it and again it's it's not a business initiative no that's really really important because I don't make these movies for business right. as you know. Well, thank you for the uh, kind words for First Weekend Club. That is our mandate, after all, to support Canadian films and filmmakers. So get out and watch great Canadian films like this one.